welcome to another episode of Uber. Today we are going to build a contact me form in a React site using Amplify. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post videos on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, so let's get started! <laughs> This is the first on a two series part where we will be building a contact uh, me form. Uh, in the first part, this video, we are going to get started and build the front end. And in the front end, well, we will be also adding a little bit of the back end. So we will be building today a React site where we are adding a contact form. And using Amplify, we will be creating a Lambda function, an API gateway, and a DynamoDB. So whenever we fill some information in that contact form, we will be saving that information in the DynamoDB through the API gateway, the Lambda, and then up to Dynamo. In the second part of this video that is coming out next week, we are going to build a backend part of this uh, fully backend part, where we will be using some to build a Lambda function that whenever something is added to this database, send us an email or send the person that uh, just put a message in the content form an email we need. We can decide what we want to do. So let's get started building this. Let's check the code and see how we can build this. It's so simple with Amplify. I will not go into the basics of Amplify because we already discussed those in many videos and I will leave you the links for the whole Amplify playlist in the description box. So the first thing we are going to do is to create a new project. I will create a new directory. I will call it contact form app and there I will just create a new React application. I will call it client because I want to have in the same folder the client and the backend so it's way easier to share it with you in GitHub but feel free to have it as two separate projects if it makes it easier for you. So I will skip forward this part because this is just downloading everything for the Create React app and doing nothing special. So now our React app is ready, we can start it and then we can see it in the browser. Yes, everything is good and working. So let's start uh, opening this project in uh, Visual Studio Code and or in your favorite IDA and start adding Amplify here. So I will do Amplify in it inside of that directory and that will create the basics of the Amplify project. I will just put some basic name and go through all the defaults basically. The contact form will have two types of categories in Amplify, storage and API. When you add an API, it will create also a Lambda function and we will not add authentication because I want everybody that is in my website to be able to send me a message and not to go through authentication. So we went through all the defaults in the Amplify initialization and then we can pick our profile. You should have configured the Amplify in your computer in order to do this. If you don't know how to do it, I will leave you the link on how to do it in the description box below of this video so you can follow the instructions to have all the prerequisites needed in your computer before getting started. When this will create all the things in your uh, AWS account that you need to get started with Amplify and when it's ready, it will return you the terminal. And when we are ready, we will add Amplify dependencies to our project. So then we can use these libraries in our client. So I am installing this and I will skip forward until it's installed because it takes a while to download everything from the internet. So now when the dependency have installed, we can do Amplify add storage and that will create our Dynamo table for us. So again, it will show us some uh, things to select. We will select that we want a NoSQL database and then we'll need to give them that database a name. We can go with the default. I will give a name so then it's easier for me to find it in my AWS console. 
I will give it the name form table and then I will go with some of the defaults and now we need to add a column to the table this is a NoSQL, no schema database so basically the most important thing that you need to add here is the ID the rest you can add whatever you will see I add the name, email and a message and then I press enter again and I add a non column because I didn't want to start over again and this non column will not appear anywhere because this is a no schema database unless I send a message with that so don't worry about everything but the ID then you need to define which one is the uh, ID the partition key of the table and that's where you choose ID and then you go with all the defaults again the no uh, we don't need a sort key we don't want a secondary index we don't want triggers um, everything like that now we do amplify add API and we will add a rest API this is an API gateway that it will get added to our um, our application and then we just put a name I will put a easy name like form API put the name you want and then a path I will put backslash contact just put whatever makes you happy and we will create a new lambda function and we need to give it a name again you can put the default you can put a name I just put a name and then we need to decide in which language and what kind of application we want I will use a basic express application to make my life as easy as possible and I want this lambda to access the storage that we just created and we give uh, create and read capabilities we don't need much and that's enough for this uh, function uh, we don't want it to run on a recurring schedule we don't need layers and we will not go and edit it now because I want to show you what this function is. We don't want to restrict this API because we want it open for everybody. So that's all the configuration we need. Then we go to the client, amplify backend function and the name of the function and source. And there we will find an example of our code. And this is our express function using Node.js. And you will see that there is a lot of things already in there. I will be removing part of the code and adding new code, so let's do that now. So the first thing is all the requirements for Express, and you can see on the top there is a couple of environmental variables, we will need them to call our uh, DynamoDB table, and then I will add also the AWS SDK for Dynamo, and the document client library for accessing easier, those Dynamo tables. Then I will add a function that generates ID in an easier way so I don't need to import any libraries and I will remove all the example code, we don't need it. And there I will add one function that is a post when somebody sends a post message to my Lambda function with the path contact then this, uh, this will execute and we need to Make sure that the environmental variable, the name of the table, is the one from the environmental variable that is described on top. And then we just basically this uh, post, what it does, it creates a new item for our table with the ID, the name, the email, and the message. That is what we want to get from the contact form. It creates a JSON document with it and it passes it to the document client from Dynamo to send it to. Uh, to put it in Dynamo and that's what it does store something in Dynamo in the format we want so that's pretty nice and very simple and with that says we have built our backend we don't need to do anything else now we need to deploy this into the cloud because everything that we have is local these functions, this API gateway, this Dynamo table doesn't exist in the cloud so we need to do Amplify Push and put it into the cloud. When we write Amplify Push it will show us a little table with three categories that is the functions, the storage and the APIs and everything needs to be created in the cloud. So we say yes and then we wait for everything to get finalized in the cloud. This will take a little while because it's creating a lot of resources in the cloud 
If you only change the Lambda function later, it will be uh, way faster the deployment, but this initial deployment is quite slow. So I will speed forward until the uh, deployment is done and we have all our resources in the cloud. So when this finished, it shows us the REST endpoint and then we can go to our client code and start doing some modification. This will be everything in the app.js because I don't want to mend with multiple pages, so I'm making a super simple contact form. Feel free to make it better. So I will go to the app.js and remove the logo, we don't need it, and also add the Amplify imports and configuration so we can start using Amplify in our project. So now Amplify is accessible from our app.js and everything is configured so we can modify our main method, the app method, with our kind of form so we can display that there. And also I will be using the React Bootstrap library for uh, making it a little bit prettier because I'm a terrible front-end uh, developer. So I will install the React Bootstrap and Bootstrap into my project and, and then uh, everything will be kind of ready to modify a little bit more our client app. So now uh, we have React Bootstrap. I will be changing a little bit the uh, main method for app.js. And there you can see I'm using the React Bootstrap uh, for containers, for form, for the button and everything. So that will give a little style uh, with me <laughs> not needing to do much. And that will create a little form that has uh, three um, text inputs, the name, the email, and the message, and then a little button that says send a message. So that's all we need. And when you press the button, we just need uh, to call a method that I call send mail, but I think it's better to call it add a contact because we are storing something in the database and not really sending a message yet. But yeah, so then we need to create this method, the add a contact, and that method is the one that is uh, really doing something. And what it's doing is uh, calling the API gateway we just created. So the first thing that it does, it grabs whatever is in the form state. And in here we will have a name, an email, and a message, and I will put it in the body of our request. And then it will call the API gateway which has created, in this case was name form API, in the path contact, and I, it will send that data. And then basically it will show an alert that the mail was sent. What is not true because we have not sent an email back, we are going to do that in the second part of these videos. But for now it's good. <laughs> And the last thing we need is to add the uh, form state management. So then we can manage the state for this. And that's all we need to do in our client. I will install Bootstrap because I forgot to install it. And when it's ready, I will show it how it looks in the browser and we can test it. So now Bootstrap finished installing and this is how it looks in the browser. We have this form that says get in touch with free input text and we can write there whatever we want. And when we press send message, we will see the uh, alert popping uh, saying that a mail was sent, but it's not true, but well, it will happen in the next, uh, in the next thing. Then if we open DynamoDB, we can see what is going on after we send uh, add a contact we can refresh that uh, table that was empty and now it has one element with all the information that we just sent in the form. And that's great because now our contact is stored. We can also go to the function and see what is going on in there. We open the function and there we can go to, basically this is the one connected with API Gateway, we can go to the monitoring and view the logs for the function and there we can see that, um, and there we can see that there is one, one invocation and that invocation basically in the logs, the only thing that it does is printing the request that the node express is getting. So this is a long thing because it's an event object from HP, HTTP gateway. And if we go all the way down to the body, we can see that there are all the parameters that we just sent in our, um, 
in our client. So that's good. Then we can check also the CloudWatch metrics if we want, run invocation, and all that information we like to see. For the next video, we are going to use DynamoDB streams to trigger a Lambda function to send a mail. And because Amplify, when it creates the Dynamo table, already enables streams, we don't need to touch the client anymore. We will be working on the backend application and we will see the whole thing come to completion. The code, as always, is available in GitHub and for now you will only have half of the information and next week, stay tuned, so you will get the two parts. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. Thumbs up always helps, sharing always helps. That's how you can help me out to grow my channel. And let me know in the comment box below what other use cases you would like me to work on in the future. This was a use case that you request quite a lot in the comments. So I'm happy to showcase it to you. And that's it for today. I see you in another episode of Wubar. Ciao, ciao.